In the morning, in the night, anytime you may come, Daddy. Make me ready, O oh Lord. Make me ready. Make me ready. Make me ready, Baba. Make me ready, O oh Lord. In the morning, in the night, Anytime you may come, make me ready, O oh Lord. Father, we want to hear from you. We know it's a time and a message for us today. You want to charge us up. You want to be pierced, O oh Lord, on how we need to live our life in this end time dispensation. When many people are carried away, when a lot of saints, even the very elect, are already drifted. Lord, I pray you will open our eyes, you will open our minds, you will open our ears, and you will help us to get the word directly to our hearts. In Jesus' name, let your word this morning immunize our spiritual minds and souls. And give us divine immunity till you come to take us home. Thank you, Father. Every spirit of distraction we cancel. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Praise the Lord. This morning I welcome every one of us to this uh, Sunday worship service in Jesus' name. Today we are looking at a topic, very briefly, the end time virtue. Of moderation in all things. The end time virtue of moderation in all things. Let's quickly open a text to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I read from verse 5. The Lord want to prepare an end time soldier. And at a time like this, when the kingdom of darkness are really manifesting greatly to see how many people they can draw to themselves. The Lord is also up there, and he wants to raise up end-time soldiers that will help to tell the people the truth, to draw many to the light. Philippians chapter 4, I read from verse 5. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. The Bible says, Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is coming very soon. The signs are everywhere. And Christ will soon take his people. Are you going to be among those that will be, you know, uh, you know, captured with Christ, that will go with Christ in the air when the trump of God shall sound? And the dead that are dead in Christ, they will first rise. We which are yet alive, my brethren, we shall be caught up in the sky. This is a time to be sober. Brethren, the coming of the Lord is imminent. The coming of the Lord is very near. The coming of the Lord is at hand. It is closer to us today, far more than it was for those of old. And if, as of the time of this scripture, they were only preparing for the coming of Christ because of the promise of the Father. How much more should we, as saints in the latter days, prepare for that coming? Apostle Peter, in 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 4, he gave a warning to believers that the end of all things is at hand. When people are struggling to fulfill themselves with the things of this world, with the wealth that will wipe away, we as believers must be sober. We must watch and pray. We must not behave like the people of the world. Just over the weekend recently, we saw one of the news that was trending everywhere. And I could only but weep Looking at the comment of many young people, they said, Fellow, they call him, uh, what do you call him? I don't even know him really. Or just, just when the team was trending everywhere, I, I saw and I did a burial for the mother, and uh, you know, this is Kubana or Kubana or something of that nature. And of course, you know, a lot of money was spent. 
somebody that has died, bought over 250 cows, of course, there were donations and all that, but there's a point I'm going to, because if you have the money, why not? You celebrate that. Bought over 250 cattle and a lot of goats and all that things. I wouldn't want to exaggerate. And then, they, according to what I read, that, um, you know, the casket that they used to bury the mother was around, is it a 50 million naira? Praise the Lord. <laughs> a casket that was used to bury somebody oh, around 50 million naira. And many other things, you know, they were spreading dollars and money there and everything. The street was soaked with cash. And many youths of this generation will say, ah, where can we see, where can they see this kind of money? Oh, ah, this one, I will never die poor. This one, that one, money, ah, maybe I will be go there and pick some. And I was weeping in my inner man. And I said, all these people, the love of this world, the love of money, people are no longer concerned about where the soul of the departed will rest. Or rather, people are more concerned about the, 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 the celebration, the, 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 the money, the, the, the not even caring whether this money was gotten neatly or not. Brethren, the coming of the Lord is at hand. We are in the end time, and we, are, we, we, should not be, we should not be confused. We should not be surprised when we see some kind of unusual happenings, you know, taking place. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, I read to us from verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, as a child of God, as an end time believer, as a soldier of Christ, as the righteous man of God, righteous woman of God. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Brethren, as we look forward to the great event of the coming of Christ, we must understand that we are to guard our own hearts. We are to let our moderation be known unto all men. Moderation in dressing, moderation in spending, moderation in what we even eat, moderation in where we go, moderation in our association. Moderation in whatever we are what highly determined about. Let our moderation be known unto all men. In all things, and we must refuse to be distracted by the players and the pursuit of this evil world. As we know, the world will pass away. Many people don't like to hear about the truth anymore. But as end time soldiers, we must spread this truth to as many as we can. We must not be distracted. We must not make the things of this world our priority. Here, we don't teach laziness. We don't teach poverty. Of course, we recommend that people work hard. And that is why I believe we're all here to, to, to better our lives, to get a better degree so that we can you know, have higher chances of working in better places, of course. It is not the desire of God that any of his own children should suffer or should be in want. It is the promise of God that we are in good health, we are in good life. But what we are saying is that we must avoid the excesses and focus on preparing for the most important, the coming of the Lord. The end time, virtue of moderation, must be reflected in all we do. It must be real in our lives. It must be reflected in our lives. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I read from verse 29. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 29, But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. And they that weep as though they weep not, they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. Verse 31. And they that use this world, the Babylon of our time, as not abusing it for the fashion of this world 
pass it away. The Bible is complete. And that is why when I hear people say it with their mouth open wide, there is no God. I said no wonder the, 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 the best words, the word, the, the best words the Bible could describe them with is a fool. It's only a fool that has said in his heart, there is no God. Those who are common sense, they can see with all the happiness in the world, even the scientists and all the archaeologists and all those people, they have discovered many things that prove that there's what? A higher power somewhere. Verse 35. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that, for that which is comely, than that ye may attend unto the Lord, upon the Lord, without distraction. I pray we will not be distracted from the things that count even in this end time in Jesus' name. Point number one, the timeless commandment of moderation in ambition. The timeless commandment of moderation in ambition. How can we balance our ambition with the moderation that has been commanded unto us by the Lord? Let's look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 5. Philippians chapter 4, I read from verse 5. The Bible says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. You don't need to hide your moderation, brethren. It is something that must be reflected. I would say we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. The things we do, it must be something that is reflected. No one of the songwriters said, can others see Jesus in you? They must see it. It must be real in our life, in our dealings with men. In our expenditures, in our lifestyle, the way we carry ourselves, there must be moderation reflective. The commands of the Lord from our text in Philippians 4 5, that our moderation be known unto all men, serves as a charge for us to be modest in all our ambitions. Unfortunately, a lot of people allow their ambitions, which are not being verified and checked. To consume them. This is because they want to impress the people around them. Many of our youth today, they want to impress the society. They want to impress the women. They want to impress everybody around them. They want to impress their equals so that they can say, yes, I have it more than you. As a child of God, that is not a good spirit. That is not a good kind of life. That is not a good ambition. Some of them, they want to even exalt themselves more than God. They want to exalt themselves above everybody. Of course, we are not surprised. They have a role model. Just as you as a child of God, you have a role model, a Christ. These people that are always after the ambitions, after the lust of the flesh, the, 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 the pride of life, they are, after, they are following after their role model, who is Lucifer. Remember Lucifer? His ambition was to be like God, not a good one. Please take note. Today we have a song say, Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. We have to understand the lyrics of the song. The lyrics, why should we want to be like Christ? Because we want to be humble like him. Because we want to live a righteous life. The character. And not really... The position and this one wanted to be. This one wanted to take over the position of God. How terrible that is. He deceived Eve through his ambition to eat the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. It was that ambition of Eve that caused the fall and brought wrath upon humanity which we are still suffering until tomorrow. And this made everyone that is born of a woman to be a sinner by nature. That is why when you see people, they are not saved. They not really give it up to Christ, but they are saying, yes, no, I'm, I'm going to church, I'm doing the moral things, I'm clean, I'm not committing fornication, I'm not a telling lie, I'm not doing this. But they are not safe. They can still be angry. They can still have some evil things in their mind. They can still tell some small, small lies and it does not really mean anything. But they are holy. They feel they are holy. They feel they are moral. Brethren, the works of our hands is not enough. We must tell our the, the friends. We must tell the souls. 
You must have a definite time you give your life to Jesus. You must surrender all to him. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. And when you are surrendered to Christ, you walk in the precept of Christ. Right from time, God has seen the potentials in man. Because God himself created man. And in the original plan, he said, let us make man in our own image. And of course, from time, from time memorial, God sent his son to redeem us from the bondage of sin. However, there was something I want us to understand here. Why the people who built the Tower of Babel were scattered abroad upon the face of all the earth, Pharaoh and Absalom manifested dreadful ambition that consumed them. The people of the world, they have an ambition. They want to be, you know, only the one at all. They don't want other people to also benefit from the good things that the Lord has provided for every one of us to enjoy in this life. So, that time, with regards to the story of the Tower of Babel, they were building and building and building, and they continue building. Covetousness of man, you know, greed of man. It has been right from time memorial. And God saw, ah, these things people are building like this. If we don't caution them, anything can happen. That time, they were still speaking one language. And that was what led to the word dispassion and you know, variances in, in languages and tribe today. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. I read from verse 12. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will minister unto us in a new dimension in Jesus' name. Isaiah 14 verse 12. The Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? That was the, uh, the, 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 the record of the fall of Satan. And then if you continue reading, you see how it was, what the devil was planning. He said, I will sit also upon the mouth of the congregation in the side of the north. I will ascend above the height of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell and to the side of the pit. They that shall see thee shall not only look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that this shake kingdoms? By the way, I hope you know, no matter what the devil is doing today, there's a time when he will be locked up where? In the bottomless pit, at the battle of Magidion. And there will be a time where he will also be what? Cast into the lake of fire. So we must be very careful not to, you know, give our lives to the devil and not to serve him because at the end of time, we and, I mean, those, the followers of Satan, all his cohorts, they will all what? Be cast into the lake of fire. Nothing that the devil provide you will last for eternity. Genesis 3, verse 1 to 6. As we pursue our ambition in this world, we must also what? Put at the forefront the ambition of making heaven, the ambition of righteous living. Genesis chapter 3, I read from verse 1 to 6. Genesis 3, let's look at how it was from the time beginning. He said, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, as God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. You see, when you give the devil a small chance, he will go further. The more you give him a chance, the more he destroys. I pray we will not give the devil a chance to destroy us in Jesus' name. Brethren, let our conversation be without covetousness. 
And we must be content with the things we have. We must be satisfied with whatever God provides us with. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake you. Amen? We should not be so ambitious that we forget that the coming of the Lord is near. That we forget that the coming of the Lord is imminent. Christ Jesus wants us to be content with what we have. Because he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. But godliness with contentment is what? Is great gain. Our moderation, therefore, must be practical. It must be seen in the way we live. It must be seen in whatever we are doing. And we must ensure that we are ministers that practices what we preach. We must not preach to people and do something else. No. We must live by what we preach. We can only convince the sinners that we are we can only convince the sinners that we are true Christian if the reflection of moderation is seen in our personal life. Number one, in our marriage. What does the Lord say about marriage, Christian marriage? We must abide by that. Number two, in our burial ceremonies. We must not be so, you know, glamorous and, uh, you, know, you know, spend so much unnecessarily. In our housewarming ceremonies, naming ceremonies, ETC, through this public comportment that we show, people of the world who are seeing us can be sure and ascertain that we are not distracted by the player of this world. And that is how we can also win them. How do you preach to somebody when you yourself, you are not living the life? Brethren, the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to pay more attention to the things of heaven, to the things that are spiritual, to the things that are eternal, to the things that are profitable. The Lord wants us to pay attention to the things that are profitable. And what are the things that are profitable? Heaven. The race to heaven. Our mansion in heaven, that is what is most profitable. The privilege for us to be able to stay with all the other elders and sit in heaven and worship the Lord in the beauty and holiness. That is the most profitable thing to ever do. The Lord will help us. That as we have learned in our study scripture, the privilege to be among those saints that we want feast with Christ at the marriage supper of the Lamb. What a beautiful thing and beautiful time that will be. The Lord will help us, brethren. I said the Lord will help us. Just as the, in this world, you know, everyone wants to associate with the big people, with the important people, important personalities. Listen, when you are invited to come and feast with the elite, you know how powerful that the feeling you feel like, wow, you feel special. How much more the king of all kings? How much more feasting with the Lord of Lords? It will be a beautiful time. How beautiful heaven must be. Oh, how beautiful heaven must be. I will not miss heaven. You will not miss heaven in Jesus' name. The Lord wants us to pay attention more to the heavenly things, to the spiritual things, to the word of God. As the coming of Christ is drawing very near and near and nearer, though many people may, you know, compromise their faith, many people may drift backwards, many people may be satisfied with the things that this world provided them with. As children of God, we must flee every form of covetousness. We must flee every form of evil. And we must pursue after righteousness, holiness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. The fruit of the Spirit. The Lord will help us. I said the Lord will help us. We will start to the very end in Jesus' name. Look at Exodus chapter 15. Exodus chapter 15. I read from verse 9 to 13. The Bible says, the enemy says, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My Lord shall be satisfied upon them. 
I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea cover them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. Verse 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thou stretched out the right hands, and the earth swallowed them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 13. Thou in thy mighty, in thy mercy, hast led for the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. Brethren, there is none that can be compared unto the Lord Most High. You see, the Bible is very complete. It has even spoken of things that we did. In those days, they also had the graven image. In those days, they also worshipped idols. It's not today, it started. And that is why we must not be deceived. And we must ask the Lord to help us, to help as many as we can help. That I force religion to spread the gospel of light, the gospel of salvation to them. There's none that can be compared unto our Lord Most High. Praise ye the Lord. Let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5, before we round up point 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, I read from verse number 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 10. The Bible says, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with, uh, with silver. Do you know who was speaking here? The richest man in time, Solomon. They are married a lot of wives, 700 and 300 concubines. That's 1,000. That was terrible. No, he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. Imagine after that kind of person has enjoyed all the wealth, enjoyed all the riches, all the silver, gold, money, women. But at the end of the day, this man said what? All is vanity. If he could give us this testimony, this submission, then it is true. The Lord will help us to be wise in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrew chapter 13. Hebrew chapter 13. I read from verse 5 and 6. Hebrews 13. Verse 5 and 6. We must pray this prayer that the Lord will help us to be contented with what we have. With what he gives us. What he provides for us. Of course, the Lord will take us to high places in Jesus' name. But we must not be greedy. We must not be covetous. We must be satisfied and say thank you, Jesus. Hebrews chapter 13. We must make our money in a clean way. In a righteous way. With our sweat. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as ye have. For he had said, I will never leave thee nor for safety. Verse 6. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hallelujah. No matter what man shall do, no matter the threat of man, we will not fear man. Man is man. Man is mortal. Man can die. But God is a powerful God. He controls the affair of this world. And as we come to him in humble adoration, he will provide all that we need in Jesus' name. Second Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee. Blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness. Come in thy fullness. Stamp thy own image deep on my heart. Second Peter 3, I read from verse 10. The Bible says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall what? Shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all only conversation and godliness? Verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, 
and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Vanity upon vanity. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that we look, ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and uh, blameless. I pray the Lord will help us that our moderation will be known unto all men as we are, you know, uh, aware of the coming of Christ. And we deliberately watch and pray so that we will not be cast away at that last time in Jesus' name. Don't be deceived. Even the very elect will be deceived. We will not be deceived. I say we will not be deceived. I will not be deceived. You will not be deceived by the devil and his cohort in Jesus' name. Point number two. Our true conviction and modesty of apparel. We want to know what should be our true conviction as believers. What is our modesty? How should we be? How should we dress? We're talking about apparel. Christian dressing. Philippians chapter 4 again, verse 5 says, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3. We must not be carried away by whatever the world is doing. That is the world. What does the Bible say? What is the stand of the scripture? That should be our guide. And that is what we should preach. So that people will not say, I never knew it. The Bible will say, <laughs> on the last day, some people will say, Lord, Lord, we call in thy name, we prophesy in thy name, we did miracle in thy name, we did all of the Lord, we say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. How terrible would that be? After all our labor, after everything, people look at us and say, ah, this one is a child of God. This one is a righteous man, it's a righteous woman. After all the labor, and then the Lord disappoints us on that day. I said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. That will not be our Lord in Jesus' name. That will not be the Lord of our wife, of our children, of our loved ones in Jesus' name. First Peter chapter 3. I read from verse 3 to 6. The Bible says here expressly, Who's adorning? Let it not be that outward adorning of plating of plating the air, and of wearing of gold, of putting on of apparel. That is, you should not, what he says, some people, mis some people misinterpret the Bible. What this place is saying is simply that what? Your adorning should not be about just the outward appearance. Don't think that when you wear clothes, you are fine, then you are also fine everywhere. No! Verse, verse 4 says, But let it be the eating man of the earth, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and what? Quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Because you are to dress well, you are to dress neatly. We must not look shabby. We must not look like people that are not well fed. No, we are taken care of. No, we must dress neatly. But what should be most important to us should be the inner mind. That is what God is most important, interested about. You can dress very great, very, you know, cover everything, cover everything, and you still miss it because your heart is not clean. Some people come in form of sheep, sheep clothing. Rather, they are what? They are critical wolves in their heart. As believers, we must have true conviction of the modesty of apparel based on the word of God. The Lord, as represented by Apostle Peter, admonished believers not to concentrate on their outward appearance, but should look into their heart, the inner hidden man of the earth, which is the sight of God of great pride. We are to take care of our spiritual lives more than our physical appearance, that is it. Rather than allow worldly fashion to inspire what we wear, we should appear neat and presentable to the Lord. 
When God called Jacob to go to Bethel, Jacob commanded his household to put away the strange gods, to be clean and change their garments. As obedient children as they were, they surrendered all the strange things in their possession, and God preserved their lives. Nothing should be too difficult for us to give up in our lives, brethren. If we say we are following after righteousness, we want to make heaven at last, then we must be ready to pay the price. The scripture clearly states that the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord. Let's look at Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. I pray the Holy Spirit will inspire us and give us understanding of his word to do the right thing in Jesus' name. The conclusion of the old thing, the Bible says, He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a word, it is a sin. We will not make ourselves judges, no, but we must guard after our own heart. We must guard after our own family, first of all, before we can extend to the outer world. First Timothy 2, verse 9 to 11, which is very easy to condemn other people. And that is what happened even in our church. Many people, they are very fast at condemning people, condemning the younger ladies, younger sisters. But their own children, they are, they are not able to correct them. I pray God will help us. We will not be hypocrites. In this race, in Jesus' name. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shame, faithfulness, and sobriety, not with braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly. This is New Testament, brethren. But with becometh women professing godliness, with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. For I suffer not a woman to teach not to absorb authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first born, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in a transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with what? Sobriety. May the Lord help all of us and help our women as well in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Nothing is too difficult for us to give up if we claim to be children of God. A woman should not wear what belongs to a man, no matter the situation. The Lord will punish those who compromise with the world in their strange apparel. Apostle Paul exhorts women to adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. Unlike unbelievers who are passionate about the earthly things, we should set our affection on the things of heaven on the things of above and not compromise ourselves with the world in our dressing. Before we run point two, let's look at Jude verse 21 to 25. Jude is one chapter. Jude 1 verse 21 to 25. That is before Revelation. The last book before Revelation. I read from verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Verse 24. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty dominion and power, both now and ever, and the entire church says, Amen. Very quickly, point number three, total consecration and total consecration for the mantle of the anointed. Total consecration for the mantle of the anointed. Let's open our Bible to Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52, verse 1 and 2. The anointing of the Lord is very important for all believers. 
when we are anointed, you see, we walk according to the spirit and not to the things of the flesh. But when you are dry, when you are not anointed, when you are walking just by your own self, by your own power, by your own strength, you see that the things of this world will be so glittering to your face. I pray the Lord will help us. We will not be carried away by the presentation of the devil in Jesus' name. Isaiah 52. I read from verse number 1 and 2. The word of God is to help us to learn. Is to help us to be cautious. Is to help us to follow after righteousness. From verse 1 of uh, Isaiah 51, say, Hearken to me, listen to me. Ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock, whence ye are healed, and to the hole of the pit, whence ye are dead. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone, and bless him, and increase him. When God calls you, you have to follow the call of the Lord. Don't be carried away by the people of the world, by your old friends. Some people have to let go. When the Lord wants to use you, you must distance yourself from sin, from your, the, the old friends that will make you to go back to your vomit. Chapter 10, Isaiah, verse 27. He says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away. And hear your amen. From off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Anointing that break the yoke be released upon your life, upon my life, this moment in Jesus' name. Brethren, we should not be concerned by the things that glitter or appear attractive. Some of them, they are just, uh, you know, mirage. And they will not last the, the test of time. Same as we don't look at physical attributes alone in our when we are looking for the will of God. In fact, when you are looking for the will of God, you only listen to God. And when the Lord gives us his own will for our life, that person becomes beautiful automatically to us. Am I right? You don't look at whether the beauty of it, you don't look at other people. But why is the one that is beautiful to you? Because say the word beauty be old in the what? In the eyes of the what? Of the beholder. And same thing. When we look unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, every other thing of this world will not, will not amaze us so much. Will not be greedy. Will not be convictions. The power of the Holy Ghost and the mantle of the anointed will enable us to do exploit for the Lord in Jesus' name. I want to admonish us today as we round up. This should be our interest. Our utmost interest is to do exploit for the Lord. We take a lesson from Prophet Elisha. He was consecrated. He was totally committed. He did not leave his master, Elijah. And that was what helped him to get a double portion of the Spirit of God that was on Elijah. That was what transferred to, transferred to him. Through the mantle of Elijah, he said, and it came to pass. When they were gone over, in the, let's look at 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2. That Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do. For thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. What happened? He received the power immediately and he performed even many more miracles than his predecessor. The same like manner, God also wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul the Apostle, so that from his body, sick people were brought to him, and the handkerchief of Aprons of Apostle Paul healed the sick. So God can do miracles. Yes. God has done miracles in the past. He's still doing miracles today. But we must be careful not to, you know, be confused and deceived by the false prophet. Because false prophet will also be there. Praise the Lord. 
But when you see something that is of God, that's why the Bible gives us the, 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 the freedom to what? To test every spirit. So God, there's no doubt, he still does miracles today. Paul was very powerful that when they put handkerchief on the, from his body and they touch the sick, the sick they are healed, no matter the kind of sickness. Diseases ran away from the people and evil spirits disappeared instantaneously. Our lives and mantles should carry the power of God and the anointing of God to heal and to deliver. That when people are sick and they come to us for prayer, we can pray for them through faith and they are healed immediately. If our garment please the Lord, it will cause his blessing to come upon us and there shall be showers of blessing. I said there shall be showers of blessing and the glory of the Lord will clothe us as we remain modest and uncompromising in our stand for the things of the Lord. The Bible says, everybody shall be taken away from off our shoulder. Hallelujah. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Anointing breaks the yoke. I said anointing breaks the yoke. In Esther chapter 6, we read that story last week also of how Mordecai who was despised, but by the grace of God, the enemy of Mordecai, Amon, saw his rising and Amon, the enemy was what? Was destroyed. The peace that he did for Mordecai, the, 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 the gallows, sorry, that was where he was what? Hanged and died mysteriously. Now, as a child of God, you might have been, you know, uh, crucified. You might have been persecuted for righteousness sake, for the things of Christ, for the things of the gospel. It's not everybody that we accept the truth. It's not everybody that we associate with you because of what you believe, because of the word of God. Bible says there's a time appointed unto everyone. There's a time you may be crying now. There will be a time of rejoicing. I didn't hear your amen. That's in Exodus chapter 10. There will be a time of rejoicing. There will be a time when by the grace of God, you shall be celebrated. Even your enemies shall celebrate you in Jesus' name. We must be patient and follow the right process for our promotion. As we trust the Lord to open such doors for us. Let me tell you something. Don't be hasty to be promoted. Be hard working, do your best, work hard, but trust the Lord more. And as you trust the Lord more, the day of your promotion is very near. And when the Lord promotes you and opens doors for you, ah, it will be a very beautiful one. Everyone will celebrate you. And they will say, indeed, this is the work of the Lord. And we will give all the glory back to the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's go down. Let's go on our knees. Let's bow our heads. Rise up anywhere you are and tell the Lord. And say, Lord, I have had your word. Please, Lord, help me. Help me to walk in humility. Help me to walk in holiness and righteousness. Help me to be moderate in my ambition. In all things, help me, O oh Lord, not to pursue after the world, not to pursue after the glamours of this world. These things that glitter, not all that glitter is gold. Tell the Lord to help you, to help us to be contentment, to be contented with what we have. And as we keep on believing God for upgrading and keep on believing God to, uh, to uplift us, we will remain humble. We will remain righteous. Even when the Lord has uplifted us, we will not neglect Him. We will continuously serve Him to the very end. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for opening our eyes this morning. We thank you for reminding us and giving us a timely warning and a timely call that what we should stand lest we ourselves be deceived. The Bible says that at the end time, perilous time, many, the love of many shall wax cold, and they, even the very elect shall be deceived. 
Lord, we thank you for opening our eyes. We pray you give us the grace to stand and stand firm, to not be deceived by the things of this world and this end time life. In Jesus' name, help us to be contented with what you give us. And help us to be sober, to be watchful, to be prayerful, and to be moderate in all things. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. I pray, Lord, that whatever we lay our hands to do this week shall prosper. I prophesy upon your children this day, whatever they lay their hand to do, let it bear fruit in Jesus' name. All our prayer, all our outcry, let there be answered this week. Thank you because I know you have answered. Give us testimony by the end of the week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, and God bless you.